All right, YouTube, good morning. Today we're gonna tackle a hardtail setup and I'm gonna teach y'all how to do it. This is a, this is a prime example. It's a brand new guitar. It's the like Epiphone, you know, cheapish guitar, but it doesn't mean, you know, it's, it's a starter guitar. This thing's like a hundred dollars. And actually they can be kind of cool. I'm gonna check this one out. I'm gonna make sure the frets are good. Uh, I'm gonna just show you guys kind of what's wrong with it. It just desperately needs a setup. You can see that action is ridiculous. Let me see if you guys can see the neck. Okay, so if you look at it, spot the neck. If you look down the neck, let me see. You can see it. You can see what I see. Kind of see it. It's not as. Yeah. See how the neck is bowing forward slightly? It's kind of looking blurry. Let me see if I can get it to focus. This angle. You can kind of see how it's bowed. It's much more pronounced in with my eyes as opposed to the camera. However, so yes, here we are. Uh, I'll get you all a little closer. This with the camera on my boom arm. There we go. It's looking a little better more focused all righty now that we killed a minute and this you know i don't like how this is angled i want to put it so it's up and down i'm going to clean off all this plastic you can you probably can't hear it in the video but when you turn the pots it scrapes against the plastic on this pick guard so i'm going to remove that i'm going to give it a full setup clean it up i'm going to check the frets um Follow them now. I'm going to go through the whole process. Um, just a lot of people at home, you know, they, they want to set up their own stuff. And this is, um, practice makes perfect with this. It's not something I would say you're going to be a master at after you watch this video, but I'll at least give you some really good tips and tricks. So, um, sometimes I have a bad habit of just yanking the strings off, but I can actually give it a small truss rod adjustment now before and then because it's already at the tension and these strings actually are they're the factory strings are they're, they're new this is like a brand new guitar um customer brought it to me for a setup because he bought it pulled it out of the box and yeah it just it's that shape so i can give it a quick neck adjustment and now check the nut right out and actually the nuts filed decent i might do a little bit of work to it but it doesn't need that much actually and I'm going to try to talk loud and clear because I don't have a microphone hooked up right now on my old, see, so yeah, oh yeah, not trust rod, no, it's just, it's a two-way trust rod, it was all the way and set in the middle, which means that it had no, wasn't activated at all. Trust rod wasn't activated at all, so now it's pretty good. Let's see, I like to fret the first fret and the fret that joins the neck to the body. In this case, it's fret 17. I use my pinky and then my pointer finger. And let's see if I can show you guys Up close. So when I do that, Coming down to fret number seven. And you should see it. Just like the weight of my finger. I could give it maybe a tiny bit. You just, if it's touching the fret, you went too far. You want it just like that. Check both sides, make sure the neck isn't twisted. It's pretty good. And as you can see, I'll show you down the neck. focus straight now much better than before so that's what you want I might have to adjust it a little bit depending on I think these are tens that are on it 
but I'm putting tens, I'm putting Diodario, 10 to 46. Your standard running the middle stream. So that, and then, I mean, just after a quick adjustment, just a quick truss run adjustment, is already, action's still way too high, but it's much better. So, before I go any further, since the neck is straight and everything, it's up to tension, I'm gonna check the front workout. I expect it to be bad, because this is a $100 guitar. I mean, I expect it to be, usually, the reason these things come with their necks all bowed board is usually they, they, they do that to hide some of these fret issues. Not every case. Sometimes, sometimes you get you can get a hundred dollar guitar and it's actually done pretty good. That's why I check this. They just don't do a lot of. They don't spend a lot of time in the factory on the fret work. Not near as much as they should. Leveling the frets. So far, I've already found two um, uneven frets that were um, definitely bad enough for me to like recommend having a fret dress. I had set up one of these guys recently for a kid and after it was all set up playing good it just like there were just two areas where the thing just was buzzy as hell and that was because they had the uneven frets. So I um, you know ended up telling them you know um, since you already paid for a setup let me dress the frets and I'll give you a discount. So I hook them up that way he's happy. Even took a little bit of a price hit, but I'd rather have a happy customer than um, an issue like that just because of the frets, you know. And I did end up getting paid for my extra time, so it wasn't a loss totally. So yeah, the fret work actually is decent. I expect it to be worse up here, but it's actually decent. It actually just has a few uneven frets. Um, I would probably, at this point, call the customer and explain that to him before I did anything else. And this particular, um, for this particular customer, he's the type of guy to just do whatever you have to do. So I'm gonna do it. Might give it a little bit of a fret dress. Now we got the strings loose, I'm gonna just cut them off. And um, trash these trash strings. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead remove the pick guard screws. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pick guard screws off and I'm gonna take off the um the tops of the pots, the knobs, and loosen them up. Loosen up everything and get this plastic off because it just creates issues over time. And nobody likes that. And while I'm in there, I'm going to spray some contact cleaner in the electronics cavity. Not that it needs it per se, but that's just part of my setup. That's something I do for every guitar that gets on this bench is even if the pots aren't scratchy, I'm cleaning them. And I just do that as a due diligence that'll maybe there was a little dust in there just wasn't causing an issue yet at least that way i cleaned them out it resets the clock so to speak on when those things become scratchy because they always do dust will inevitably work its way in there at some point there we go and 
know what we can do is really see if we can get our side. Okay, I need more than just my hands. But what I like to do is just kind of loosen some of these things. And this, what you can do, real simple trick. I'd wrap a flat head in the cloth so we don't want to scratch anything and then just turn it really gently and gently pry it while you turn it actually they make a tool for it and um, Stu Mac does and it's actually pretty decent I don't have one but this works fine as long as you're gentle with it it's adjustable wrench for these guys just loosen them up now we can uh do the old ramsey bolton thing start peeling start filleting this guy And honestly, for all you people who just like, you gotta leave the plastic on everything for the longest possible time, let me run you a scenario. This plastic over time ain't gonna be good looking. It's gonna be all frayed and gross. And at some point, when it looks like crap, it's gonna be much harder to get off because it's gonna wanna fuse with the existing plastic on the pit guard. And now, not only is it coming off in chunks, instead of one clean piece, it just, you know, you're just making your, your own life harder. So now I want to add it. And I don't want to want to turn it that way. There we go. We can toss that in the trash and totally miss. Stay in the procedure. anything that's looking a lot better a lot better I can get all that plastic out I like to especially when the circumstance where I loosen the, the pots so I can get the plastic off now that I got the pick guard off I'm gonna hold the pot in place I don't want to spin it and break a wire and now I'm busting out the soldering iron or something like this because I made a mistake, you know? We always want to minimal, minimalize. Human error is a thing. We all do make mistakes, but we don't want to be in our own way. We want to prevent them best we can, especially when you're dealing with somebody else's instrument. Whenever you're working on somebody else's guitar, you want to be as careful as you can. There you go. It's all set. So here we go, and look at that, it's all pretty, pretty clean. Doesn't need much, not too much at all. I like to work it in there. Really, once you spray it, turn the pots. Now we're gonna screw Humpty Dumpty back together again. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe it down and um, string it up, I'll hydrate the fingerboard, string it up. But really, I mean, on a guitar like this, because we have the compensated saddles, my intonation is all gonna be done right here. It's not gonna be 
as it's not going to take as long as if I had to do every individual string but those are surprisingly I mean close like sure I would say you can get any Floyd Rose or any Strat or any any bridge with individual saddles intonated better these style bridges the PRS style wrap around bridge too though they're decent get them pretty close I like that switch doing that better than that weird crooked thing. This is a satin guitar, so I don't want to necessarily use my high sheen polish on it because I will shine it. And now you have spots where it's shiny instead of satin. And I don't want to do that to people. People don't like that. People don't like that when their satin guitar is shiny in like one spot. Cause it never shines the whole thing nice. It always shines like just the weirdest spot. Like right here will be shiny. I'm gonna keep it satin. Knock these dust bunnies off. That's my goal on this one. If it was a high gloss guitar, then I would have been using some of this. I will put a link in the description below. I will link everything I use. Also, this is what I'm going to use on the um, fingerboard. I'll put a link for that. I get, get it at Home Depot. Oh, and this is the contact cleaner I use, by the way. CRC. It's like Six bucks. Um, a lot of people like to use steel wool on the frets, and I did for years, but I'm not gonna do that because you get the metal shavings everywhere, and it just ain't tight, it just ain't super tight. So what we're gonna do, I got some very fine steel wool. This is like 1500. I'm gonna shine it up with that. And then, but if you, all you have is steel wool, you tape your pickups, cover them with tape. And that way it'll prevent the magnets from sucking all that, those metal shavings onto it. And this is just shining them up. I know we had some uneven frets, but I wanna set it up and see how it plays. And if it plays so terrible, then we'll consider on a different video doing a front dress. But this is a basic setup video and I don't want to uh, add a bunch of time or confuse anybody who doesn't need a front dress on, you know, I'm just trying to get tips on the setup. And for the sake of it, I ran that thing across it, a little bit of cleaning. This, that's micro mesh sandpaper kind of leaves some behind what's on it already you know I've been polishing a lot of prints with that stuff so we'll just shine it up make these things looking pretty and actually this thing has a pretty you know now that it's kind of moist from me rubbing that stuff on it it actually has a beautiful piece of rosewood I mean for the quality of this guitar I mean it's not a terrible guitar but let's put it, it's a hundred dollar guitar, you know. It's it's got a nice piece of rosewood. I'm gonna just hydrate, hydrate. And you can use lemon oil in the place of this. This stuff is, is pretty good though. They sell a lot of different products. I I they have the F1 oil by the Music Nomad pretty good. Some people told me they thought it felt sticky to their hands. To me, I always felt like they might have been using too much of it. Using too much of any of this stuff, it's going to get sticky. But um, Dr. Duck's Axe Wax is really good. But this stuff, what this reminds me of is the Kent, Ken Smith one. The Ken Smith one, and it's really expensive for like a little bottle. This is like the same stuff, and it's like legitimately like $9.99 at Home Depot. So get that 
I'm always about saving people money. You know, um, a lot of those products that you buy at the guitar shops, you know, like you get guitar polish, it's legitimately just car polish in a bottle that they upcharge a lot for. So, you know, if I can save people a couple bucks with just good advice, then go me. And then like, not oil always. And it ends up on the guitar, so I'm just gonna wipe it off. I always like to wipe the back of the neck too, because some of that fingerboard oil sometimes drips on the sides. And I wanna clean everything up. It's looking good though. It's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and string it up and I'm gonna cut the video for that. Just gonna eat time away. I don't like to make super, super long videos. I kind of avoid it, even though if you watch any of my videos, they're all pretty long. All right, just for the sake of it, I'm gonna show you a couple of the strings to restring it just in case there's anybody watching who doesn't even know that or you know so real easy gonna run the string through the tuner I'm gonna take my string like this and put my middle finger down on fret number seven and if I do that for every single one of the strings then they're all gonna have the same amount of wraps roughly so I'm gonna wind the string with it going on the, the inside of the tuner. So, there we go. Two wraps, looking good. I don't like to put like 30 wraps on there, but I don't like it when I see a string that's like halfway wrapped, you know, where they just pull it tight because you don't get as good a tuning stability that way. I also, I'm not a big fan of the thing Martin Guitars does where they lock the string in there. It just seems like it puts a lot of stress right there on the string. And anytime you take, if you've ever restrung a Martin that they strung, it always seems as though like when you're getting the strings off, the string will always break. As you're taking it off, it'll break right there where it was like all tied as a knot. And that's, that to me speaks volumes. So yeah, we just do that, fret seven on everyone. So I'm gonna cut it, save some time. All right, strings is on, Get some good wraps. I like to wrap the G, B, and E with a lot more wraps, like not a super ton either, but. So they look good. But um. Set them somewhere even. So when I get there, they look good. I'm gonna set the action. Even with the neck straight, the action's a lot better, but it's still really high, so. We want it there. Right there. I want to put it like right there. I'm not fretting the first fret. Sometimes it's measured when you fret the first fret. And if I was fretting the first fret, then I want it. I want to put it at like right there in the middle between this two thirty seconds and the three thirty seconds. And then, then I'm going to just taper it down. And this one will end up at between the one and the two. That's where it's good. That's where I'm going to adjust it to. So it'll be. there you know and just kind of taper that low that'll be low actually it'll be good so here we go
easy to go too far. It's okay, that's perfect. It's a little too low on the high side. It's okay. Ain't nothing but a G thing, baby. Still, uh, I really cranked it down. Perfect. Pretty decent guitar. Once it's set up, it's a perfect learning guitar. Check this pickup height. Four, three. See, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna raise the bridge pickup a touch. Maybe raised all the way already. Jeez, I think it's already bottomed out. Wow. Let me just lower this one then. I don't want my neck pickup to drown out my. Um, bridge pickup. There we go. Should be fine. So, as a um, courtesy, go ahead and tighten everything up. But um, if you're wondering what I'm measuring these two, when I fret the last fret, I usually will set the neck pickup um, four thirty seconds away on the bass side and three, and then do three on this side and two. That's with humbuckers. With single coils like these, I'll actually do um, usually four on the bass side and three on the treble side on both, but then do the bridge pickup just a touch higher by like maybe a 64th. And usually that's just to get you close enough. You're going to want to plug it in and listen to the pickups and see, you know, which if one of them's louder than the other, and then adjust it accordingly to your ear. That's the best way. That's the best way I found. I think it's going to be the best way. And now for the intonation, I'm going to, I'm using my phone to record and I use the Peterson app on the phone, which is great if you don't want to buy a stroke tuner, if you just want a stroke tuner, save a lot of money on a stroke tuner, download the Peterson app. It's like 10 bucks worth every penny. And then they sell a little adapter too, which is great. Um, so for like 20 bucks, you're good to go. Um, so then really I'll just set the high side and the bass side in the middle will take care of itself on this particular bridge. That's just how it's designed. I'm gonna, if it's playing sharp, I'm gonna pull the string farther away. If it's playing flat, I'm gonna loosen that. I think it's gonna play sharp and I'm gonna be adjusting it out, but we'll see. And then um, 
Really, another thing that um, you should... Then my phone rang. So I like to fret the third fret. It was kind of like a big... Or past the second fret. Maybe it's just in the middle. Just so it frets on the second fret. So I guess, yeah. You fret... Yeah, either way. I'm pressing it here. I don't think it's going to matter. But yeah, you see like that it's the same thing with checking the neck you want just the weight i'm not pressing it i'm like the weight of my finger is fretting it see how it's got just that little bit of clearance like a business card that's what you want you don't want it to look like that when you fret like when you're fretting that i'm not but just say i'm fretting it and it's that high yeah that means it's going to go sharp when you fret the first fret because you have to press down too hard and you're pulling it far away so, I mean, th this this is factory. That's actually pretty good. So we check all of them. And so, yeah, I think the the A could do some filing and the, the D too, and the G a little bit. And so maybe I just need to do a little bit of filing, but it's not that bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook the thing back on the boom and I'm gonna file these couple of them real fast. You guys can watch, you can be a part of it. See if I can get this thing as close as I can. Let's get you all up in there. Okay. No. Want to file? At an angle, you don't want to file flat. You want to file at an angle. So be careful. I'll link these in the description. These are from all parts. The Japanese made ones, they're actually really good. I like to file a little bit and then check it. File a little bit and then check, file a little bit on that one that I just did. I actually was spot on on the first try. The last thing you want to do is over file because now you're either replacing a nut or you're fixing it. And 10 times out of 10, it's always better to replace it than to just do, it, do a repair to it. However, there are dark arts. I think I did a video on how to fix a buzzing nut by shimming it. And that's how I did my orange V. I did show that in that video too, in that review. So if you want to see a, a nut repair that's actually good, that's a long lasting one, check those videos out. Here we go. Actually, the B and E won't get, a, won't get much because I don't, it's always the B. It's always like, if you're gonna go too far, it's gonna be on the B. That's my experience. And that's done. Perfect. Pretty good. I just need to do the intonation, which I'll do real quick, but I need to turn the camera off for that.
a great time. Let's put this back on. Before I forget. That's it. That's all there is to it, guys. Hope everyone has a great day.